All right, here we are dealing with a fairly simple heat transfer problem. We have a concrete wall that we know that we, it has a surface area of 20 meters squared. Uh, we also know its thickness is 30 millimeters. We know the thermal coefficient of the wall. It is equal to 1 watts per meter Kelvin. And they want us to find the total heat loss through this wall in the summer and the winter. And we're going to pick two temperatures that are fairly extreme. Let's say for the summer 40 degrees Celsius and negative 15 degrees Celsius for the winter. And also we know that inside the wall, on the other side of the wall if you will, we have a temperature that's constant at 25 degrees Celsius. Now to start up, we know that this, the heat uh, loss that we need to find, has a, a unit of watts, right? So let's write up the formula for it, which we know is Q equals Q double prime, which is our flux, times area. Okay, so now what kind of flux are we going to be looking here to find? So in heat transfer we have conduction, we have convection and radiation. Here in this problem we are ignoring two of those. In more complicated problems we're going to have to take into consideration all three. But here we are dealing only with one of them and that is the conduction through this wall. The convection or radiation that's happening on the two sides ignored okay they only gave us information for k so we right away we should know that that belongs to conduction so that's what we're going to be dealing with over here so for this flux we're going to write up our flux formula for conduction here it is this is the formula right here and if we expand it a little bit we can see the temperatures right here t2 minus t1 our t2 is on this side and T1 is going to be on this side. Now you can do it the other way too. It just gonna You're going to have to know what uh, situation you're dealing with. Which uh, direction is your heat transferring. And one thing that you can always rely on. If you get confused which way the heat transfer is going. Remember, always heat is being transferred from the hotter uh, item. Hotter area. To the colder one never the other way so that is an easy way to always figure out which way are we going because this can come out plus or negative we'll find that we'll see over here so let's continue we're gonna take this and plug it in right here now I split up my uh, screen so to say here for summer and winter because we're gonna dealing with different temperatures but we will be relying on the same formula for both scenarios we're just gonna plug in different values so here you can see that I plug this into this formula right here it's all nice and together so I'm gonna take it and work in the summer session and in the winter session separately for the summer I'm gonna take my K right here our property for the wall right we're gonna plug it in we're gonna plug in our temperatures for summer 40 minus 25 which is our t1 divided by our thickness make sure you don't leave it in millimeters turn it into meters times our surface area the surface area you treat the area that is perpendicular to the direction of transfer of the heat so we're transferring the heat in through the wall this way, right? This way or that way. So this whole surface, the 20, milli, 20 meter squared area, is our area that we need to plug in here. So there you go. Everything is plugged in. And we can see that our Q, our heat loss through this wall, is negative 1000 watts. Now, what does this negative mean? Well... We assumed that T2 and T1 to be in this order, right? So, that means we assumed that the heat will be transferred from the inside or from this area going that way. But, let's look at our temperature, see? Outside is 40, a lot bigger than what's inside. So, clearly, heat will be transferred that way. So, that's why we are 
seeing this negative, it's telling us that no, 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 Trans heat is not being transferred that way, it's this way. And that is a thousand watts. Now let's see in winter when outside is smaller. So we're going to have bigger temperature here, smaller on the outside. If we plug in our values right away, we're going to be able to see that we're going to get a positive value. So that means in this case, we assumed correctly T1, T2, right? Going that way, higher temperature, lower temperature. So the heat will be transferred from this side towards that side of the wall. And if you picked your T1, T2 the other way around, then you had this as positive and this as negative. So it's okay. Just remember which direction are, is the heat going. Now the problem also asks us to play around a bit and see what kind of values would we get for these heat losses if we would use a different material here. Like they said, this is concrete, right? So if we would use wood, if we would use metal, every single material has a different property. So we would have Ks of different values. So let's see if we had a pro uh, material that had a K of 1.25 instead of 1 or 0 0.75. Let's see what happens. So for the 1.25, a higher conductivity coefficient would give us that all of these, both of these numbers, see the heat loss either way, back uh, going out from T1 to T2 or T2 to T1, depending, depending which situation we are in. But we can see that higher coefficient gave us higher values than here. Here we had a K equal 1, here 1 1.25. We had a higher conductivity, so it allowed more uh, heat to pass. Now, if our conductivity is smaller compared to the 1, let's see, look at that. Our values dropped. It uh, prohibiting heat transfer, right? So the smaller this is, the less heat transfer we're going to have. So 0 0.75, we can see that we had a 750 watt transfer rather than a 1,000. And here, only 2,000 versus 2667. And that should sum it up.